I want to welcome Agile XRM to the podcast. I've known the people at Agile XRM for the past 12 years. I've seen how their business process management tool can add massive value to complex organizational processes in sectors such as finance and government. If you have complex processes or a need for dialogues on the Power Platform or Dynamics 365, take a look at how this BPM tool can add value. You can find them at agilexrm.com or check out the show notes for more details. Welcome to the MVP show. Before we chat with today's guest, just want to mention the 90 Day Mentoring Challenge. If you want to take your career to the next level, I don't care where you're located in the world, you're welcome to join me in the next 90 day mentoring challenge check it out at arcor ako.nz365guy.com now let's get on with the show today's guest is from oslo norway she is a dynamics 365 marketing automation solution lead at avanard She started out as a computer geek wanting to be a fashion designer and now collects and owns more than 200 dresses. How epic is that? She works with Dynamics 365 since 2012 and with CRM and case management since 2010. Check her out on Twitter at Fuller Fuller. Uh, Welcome to the show, Guru Fuller. Thank you so much. Tell me, how do you pronounce your name? How do you introduce yourself? Um, Well... Depends on who I'm speaking with, really, because uh, like we say in, in Norway, uh, their child has many names or chart barn har mange navn, uh, but I would pronounce my name as uh, Guru. I've even had a pronunciation contest once with a lot of Americans trying to pronounce my name, and no one won. <laughs> <laughs> I actually looked it up on YouTube uh, before talking to you just now, and there's a famous, is it a soccer player in Norway that has the same name? Yeah, probably. I don't... Yeah, yeah. What does it mean? Is Has your name got a special meaning? It has a special meaning from the, the Nordic uh, side of the, the name. Uh, so my name is a short abbreviation of Gudrun, which means uh, God's uh, secret knowledge. Nice. That's so cool. And and this would be the, the Norse gods, right? Yeah, it depends on uh, your beliefs, I guess. But uh, that would, of course, be the Norse gods. But I often meet people from different uh, cultures and places in the wo- world. And uh, guru and guru is sometimes uh, feels a bit similar, or at least it's often pronounced as guru. And uh, I've been told my name has a special meaning in many cultures and languages, and it's often either teacher or uh, a sacred something. Uh, So I think it kind of fits the same meaning overall. It's so cool. It's so cool. Uh, Tell us a bit about food, family, and fun. What does that mean to you? Food, family, and fun. Uh, I don't know if it has a specific meaning to me. Uh, Like so, so you know, as in, tell us a bit about your family. Tell us a bit about your favorite foods, and then what do you do when you're not working? What do you do for fun? Oh, wonderful! So uh, I am from a yeah, been born and raised here in, in Norway. I'm from a, a farm uh, without animals, so it's like uh, uh, grain production, but it's uh, it's still nice to be raised at the farm, uh, and then. Norway is a long, thin country, so at certain places in the country, it's a bit dispersed around the neighbors. So I grew up with my my grandparents as the the neighbors. Uh, So, of course, family is important to me, but it's still also important with friends. And I got both through through work in the Dynamics community, but also through other communities, have friends all around the world. Uh, So it's... uh, but just generally being part of communities, I find to be uh, an excellent way of having fun. And uh, part of my favorite foods, I don't know, I really don't like the traditional Norwegian food. Like, uh, you don't? <laughs> <laughs> uh, not all of it, but if you have uh, forikol, I guess that's my, my favorite, which is uh, yeah, lamb or sheep in uh, cabbage is what that means. 
Uh, I think that's brilliant uh, food and it's very autumn food here in Norway when it's uh, time to slaughter those uh, lamb. <laughs> uh, yeah. And uh, cabbage uh, in itself is it's good, but especially good when you boil it for a very long time with uh, some lamb. Nice, nice. I've I've uh, I've got some big cabbages just coming on in my garden at the moment. So yeah, I'll send you uh, a recipe. Yes, yes, that sounds amazing. Now you mentioned other communities around the world. So what what are the other communities you're involved in? So, like you said in the the intro, and thank you so much for that nice intro. But it's I've been a part of uh, like not necessarily a dress collecting community. Uh, but uh, I like vintage clothing and that comes with maybe itself a community of those that either are uh, fanatic uh, vintage dressers or collectors like myself or everything in between. Uh, so I've gone to some festivals uh, that are both like vintage, rockabilly, uh, those kind of scene that where you can find anything from a 1930 to 1970 uh, attire. And uh, I, I grew up as a, like you said, a computer geek. Uh, I've been at the world's largest computer festival or lawn party uh, for about ten years. Uh, I've even helped organize it. Uh, so there, I made a, a good group of friends through uh, community work, uh, volunteering at uh, at that for for a decade, and uh, help. Uh, bring community to a lot of different people, like everything from gamers to creative people. Uh, yeah. That's so cool. I love on your Twitter profile, you have not a chatty Kathy, and yet you're massively involved in community. Yeah, but I'm, I, I like to talk about uh, things in particular, like uh, a topic, not just to, to sit around and, and, and chat all day about nothing. <laughs> so as long as I have a topic, I can go on and on. But if it's just uh, something to fill the noise, uh, it's not me. Yeah, yeah. Tell me one, one last thing before we get into a bit more detail around your career. Tell me about um, uh, what's your favorite cocktail? Oh, that's a good one. And I know where I want to have it as well, because there's this place in Los Angeles, which is Musso and Frank's. Uh, and they had a cocktail. I don't think it's on their, their menu anymore. Uh, but it has a, a kind of tilt of the hat to a olden, act, olden days actor. Um, and uh, now, since I haven't been able to travel for the duration of the pandemic, I actually don't know if I remember what it's it's called, but I uh, I think that the bartender might recognize me as uh, two of the blondes that used to go there and uh, know what I would uh, have <laughs> if I ordered that drink of that actor. That uh, what was the main spirit in the drink? Uh, I prefer gin based spirits uh, or cocktails. Yeah, uh, but I'm not a, a stranger to to other ingredients as well. And uh, I don't know if you've had some. Norwegian Aquavit, but that's also a great spirit to have mixed in, in for cocktails. Nice. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if I have. It doesn't jump to mind, but I do try to sample all the local um, delicacies when I'm in a country. So um, it could have been one of the other M M MVPs introduced me to it. Tell tell me about, about how did you get, you know, coming from a farming background, which, you know, I did as well. I didn't, I was on the farm till I was 18 years old before I left. Um, how did you get into IT? Well, it started by me uh, wanting uh, not just uh, to share that family computer when I was growing up. So I built my own. Uh, and uh, that, uh, I don't know, triggered some interest. So I was uh, curious and wanted to explore how things worked, how uh, it operated, how components fit together. Uh, so I ordered a bunch of parts online and I uh, assembled them and uh, yeah, installed an oper operating system and then had a computer. Uh, so I come from... How old were you? How old were you when you did this? Uh, 
like 13, 14, 14, I would wow. I guess. That's so cool. Yeah. So cool. Mm -hmm. uh, and then from there, it's just, I was the, then the go-to person, the local family IT support, uh, which I still am today uh, for both uh, my close family and uh, like uncles and uh, nephews and, uh, and then later on LinkedIn family uh, as well. And uh, yeah, I started uh, like a f uh, intern, a summer job or something with, uh, with just trying to, to be not just doing the techie computer side. So I wanted to do the graphical design. So that was a short uh, gig uh, for a few weeks. And then uh, I kind of from there decided I didn't want to work with computers, but uh, fashion design, as you mentioned in the intro. And uh, that was what I was studying for a long time. And that's, I have some, yeah, my diploma almost uh, is in clothing design. And uh, then I, I needed, uh, yeah, it's a long story how to get there, but uh, one of my, my first uh, jobs was uh, like full-time jobs where I moved to Ireland uh, to Dublin or just outside Dublin to work at Hewlett Packard as a, a, like, a support technician uh, and uh, did that for some time. And that kind of, when I got back home, jolted me into working more in IT. Mm-hmm. Have you have you mixed together your two passions of of designing clothes and IT? Uh, at least designing and being creative, I'd say, is what anyone does that works with solution architecture or solution design or systems design is uh, how should it work, who should use it, and how and why, and how to optimize it. Um, so definitely, I see a great overlap with what. Uh, I started out wanting to to learn how to to sew and uh, how also with the computer and first of all how it fit together how it worked and then later that's my my job now figuring out how things should or could work and uh, how someone would want to use it uh, and what kind of what, what business problems would it be solving Yeah yeah so from working at HP and, and getting further into IT, how did you ultimately end up around that 2010 time frame of getting into uh, the Microsoft business applications ecosystem? Yeah, so it was more transitioning from some legacy built applications and seeing, uh, I guess, like a shift when I moved the uh, employers, uh, what systems they were using and, uh, yeah, Moving from uh, something that was built legacy, even then old now would be legacy, uh, even <laughs> for the legacy dinosaur uh, softwares, uh, and starting to see like how we could utilize like an XRM project uh, for both uh, like a contact center, customer service, sales. Uh, slowly then seeing like how that is dynamics or uh, CRM. 2011 was some of the first I started actually working a lot hands-on with and then from there it was uh yeah seeing how i could i had a, a job as a crm manager for a while and uh, with that came the responsibility of a systems admin and uh, from there uh, i was asked to to join a company a consultancy firm uh, making like an industry solution for finance and banking uh, and then I was uh, sold uh, already by that time on Dynamics. Uh, and uh, I've never <laughs> looked back. <laughs> I guess uh, I did at once, one time because I switched uh, uh, to something else uh, for a little while during my career. But I came back because uh, the, the grass wasn't greener on the, the other side. <laughs> How, 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 you know, when you look at back over, you know, um, quite a, like over a decade now in business applications, what have been the kind of the big pivotal points that you you, you look at, you know, whether it be, you already mentioned the XRM and there was, I feel like I grew up in that whole period of XRM inside business apps myself. And the, you know, what have the, been the exciting 
turning points as you've seen Microsoft move forward and progress with with the technology? Except all the, the name changes, I, I probably think it, it would be that it is really back to XRM today with Power Platform. And it's not necessarily that we are uh, like new joiners today or someone new in IT starting to work with a Power Platform today don't have the same uh, history or uh, the contexts that we we do uh, that have been working on uh, like CRM, different versions of Belong, the times, and then dynamics online. But uh, now into the separation of it, what is just a platform for you to develop whatever you want to build and what is a... Uh, a first party app really uh, and you can sell with features already there um, and having discussions with like colleagues uh, that work in software engineering that love tailoring systems to your uh, your the customers needs and, and wants and desires uh, but also ha- letting them understand like of course you can develop this view of your your records or your database structure uh, and then you have to develop like the sorting features you have to develop the filters if you need any uh, are you going to switch if you want it alphabetically or do you want to sort on something else like all of that you have to custom develop whilst if we start from power platform or dynamics approach that's all there uh, and be able to see when is what a better fit and not um, and also uh, yeah I think that's kind of being able to understand the, the good and bad of both sides uh, and that not everything that's packaged as a platform is a platform uh, but uh, yeah it is a XRM still I'd say yeah yeah totally totally what, what's your focus now? Uh, is in, in in what area of technology are mainly focused on in your day to day job at the moment? Uh, it's still primarily Microsoft and uh, Dynamics. Uh, so that's kind of my my vertical, I'd say. Uh, but I I recently moved uh, from like owning the the pre sales and sales side of Dynamics uh, for Avanade in Norway to a uh, global role in our center of excellence on digital marketing, uh, which is of course uh, an area where we sell Adobe, Sitecore, uh, anything that can do marketing personalization, C- C- CMS systems, uh, content hubs, whatever, and. I kind of come in and like, uh, have you ever considered Microsoft for this? And uh, it's, uh, of course, not that I'm trying to brainwash everything into everyone into believing that Microsoft is the only systems provider, but it is uh, more like a, yeah, trying to, to, to do dialogues internally to, and also with customers that uh, Microsoft is, of course, a possible solution. And we can help you see if it is the right one or if Adobe or Sitecore or something else is the best choice for you. Uh, but it is linked to the, the Microsoft u- universe. Uh, yeah. So I'm not on the dark side. <laughs> so are you, are, are you selling and seeing Dynamics 365 marketing used a lot? Yeah, absolutely. More and more. Uh, we see... I, yeah, my... A to line is probably only Dynamics Marketing. Uh, and then, of course, customer insights and how we can integrate and show value with if you have sales and service or uh, other Dynamics products or power, power apps uh, in your organization. Uh, but really, how do your marketing department work or not work today? And how can we solve those problems? Not just say Dynamics Marketing will solve all your needs it might, it might not. It depends on what is actually your problem. Is is that uh, you're manually importing all of your customers into another system while we could help you solve that in a better way. Um, So I'm not uh, only evangelizing Dynamics Marketing. 
uh, but generally how to help improve uh, a marketing department uh, and also how they are talking with sales uh, and like the, the marketing uh, capabilities. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Are you, are you seeing the use of customer data platforms or particularly Dynamics 365 customer insights part of that conversation? Yeah, very often we do. Or if the customers already have their uh, a CDP from another vendor, how did that come in play? Or if they built a very complex data platform, uh, do they need a CDP? Do they not need a CDP? And like customer insights is a CDP, but it's also a lot more. Uh, so it is to understand, you, you might think that it will only unify uh, to a customer profile and you've already done that someplace else. But what do you want to do with that when you have that unified pro, uh, profile or that customer view? Do you want, is that where your journey ends? Then you probably not don't need anything else. Uh, do you want to, like for engagement insights, which is uh, coming to do uh, a lot more of the same capabilities we see similar to, to Google Analytics, but not not really, but uh, uh, tracking your, your web traffic or different uh, channel traffic and see how that overlays with your segments, your uh, retention scores, your, yeah. So that really is more than just a, a CDP, uh, but it's still a little baby. <laughs> it's not really, it's not mature and it's not, uh, yeah, been able to grow here on its back yet, but it is getting there. Mm-hmm. So true. Wow, it's so interesting talking to you, Guru. Um, I always like to wrap up these sessions with some quickfire random questions. Um, uh, are you ready for yours? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, first one, nice and easy. Would you rather be slightly late or super early? I think my default here is slightly late. <laughs> if you could be famous, what would you want to be famous for? My charm. Nice, nice. Uh, if you had to relive the same day for the rest of your life, which day would you choose? Uh, not my first day at uh, <laughs> this planet, maybe. Uh, not my last. Uh, so I'd say something in be- in between. Nice. Guru, thank you so much for coming on the show. Well, thank you for having me. Hey, thanks for listening. I'm your host, business application MVP, Mark Smith otherwise known as the NZ365 guy. If you like the show and you want to be a supporter, check out buymeacoffee.com forward slash NZ365 guy and leave me a message. Stay safe as always out there. Ciao for now.